Hello from First Presbyterian Church in Clinton, Missouri. I'm Nancy Gillard. I'm the pastor of the church. And this is the Sunday message for January the 24th, 2021. We're going to be looking at Genesis 1, 1 through 5. And for the next several weeks, we'll be looking at Genesis, the story of Genesis, the beginning. So today we start with Genesis 1, 1 through 5. As you're finding that, I'll make a couple of announcements. I want to let you know that we are back in church service, and we will be doing that with uh, sanctuary service, as well as fellowship hall, as well as outside drive-in service. So you can do any of the three, but we look forward to seeing you back at church. If you come into the sanctuary, you will continue to wear your mask. We will not be singing, and we will distance socially because we still have this pandemic that is still causing a lot of illness. So we'll keep each other safe. I uh, also want to let you know that the Carillon deadline is this week. So if you have anything that you need to get in for the Carillon, please do that. As always, if you have any questions, if you have any needs, we hope that you will give us a call at the office. Office hours are 8 until noon, Monday through Friday. You can always get a hold of us at the office, or please don't hesitate to give me a call. I'd be happy to receive your call anytime at all. And so now let us bow our heads in prayer as we look at this day's scripture. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask that you would open our hearts. This is a story that we've heard before, Lord, but it is your sacred word. Help us, Lord, to continue to embrace it in our lives. Let the Spirit of God fill us so that we might be inspired to do the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. So here we have Genesis 1, 1 through 5, in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was speaking to a friend this last week, I asked them, what does this passage mean to you? And he said, well, it takes the indescribable and makes it describable. And certainly that is 100% accurate. I have to tell you that um, trying to understand light and darkness drew me back to a memory from the Gillard family. The Gillards always took our vacation to Grant's home in Albert Lee, Minnesota. And we always went the fourth week of July. It was a family vacation. So Grant's brother and sister from other parts of the country, we all got together up in Albert Lee, Minnesota, the week of 4th of July. Uh, the school bands played at 4th of July because we would always go to the 4th of July parade on that day. So the school bands played, the Boy Scouts would march, the fire engines from around the different towns around Albert Lee would blow their horns. My niece, Molly, she hated the noisy parade. We always had to beg her to go to the parade because she hated it. And she hated it even though she knew that all that candy, the Tootsie Rolls and the peppermint candies and all those candies would be thrown and the kids would collect them in their plastic bags. But she still hated it. After the parade itself, We'd go back to the farm, we'd have a little dinner, we'd uh, enjoy the rest of the day, and then we would go back as it was getting dark so that we could watch the fireworks that were displayed, the firework display that happened over Fountain Lake. We took our folding chairs down to the bank of the lake to join others who had gathered there with their chairs and with their blankets to watch the aerial display. The fireworks began and there was a chorus of appreciative oohs and ahs with each colorful burst of the skyrocket. 
but invisible in the black sky, a storm cloud moved in. And right in the middle of the fireworks, and almost directly above us, the sky was suddenly split by a towering uh, streak of lightning. A split second after the lightning, there was a fantastic clap of thunder, which made the man-made aerial bombs just sound like penny firecrackers. All of us who had been ooing and awing were now absolutely silent. As we still were taking in the rumbling that had happened in our own bodies, our own bellies. Um, but Molly lifted her head and she looked skyward and she let out a cheer and she broke into this huge set of applause. And through Molly, we all then were led to, to applaud. And I leaned over to her later on in the evening and I said, I thought you hated the big boom. And she said, not at all. Not when it's God's big boom. And that was great. As I listened to her, I could almost see God beaming with pride at all that he had wrought simply by the flip of his wrist. Such a little thing, a crack of lightning and a boom of thunder. To God, that's just a flick of the wrist. In the Bible, when something really important is happening, there is often some kind of aerial display which accompanies it. It accompanies the event and calls attention to the fact that it's connected with the other events. Let's consider some of those. Last week, we talked about the baptism of Jesus. Jesus goes down into the water of the Jordan. The heavens open up. The Spirit descends upon him. And he hears, and all the people hear, the voice of God from heaven confirming who he is and what he is. A very impressive ceremony. Then we begin to realize that the waters and the spirit and the voice from heaven remind us of something else. Of course, they remind us of the creation story itself, the creation of the world, which is recounted in Genesis 1. There was dark water of chaos. And the spirit hovered over like a dove. And then the spirit came in God's voice from heaven and said, let there be light. That is the creation story. And the whole sky, and I mean the whole sky, lit up. It was a miracle. It was fantastic. The special events that happened at Jesus' baptism have a striking similarity to those of the creation of the world. And so it is clear that there is connection. We need to look for what that connection is. There are other connections that we need to think about as well. Let your mind wander through the best of the Bible stories. Do you remember the Exodus story? After the Israelites crossed at the Red Sea, the liberated Israelites are at the foot of Mount Sinai. Remember that story? They are staring up with eyes wide open to the top of the mountain. And the top of the mountain is surrounded by swirling clouds. And it is being bombarded by lightning. And Moses, standing there like a lightning rod with his arms stretched out, he is there before them. The people hear a voice from heaven outlining the moral law for human life, which we call the Ten Commandments. This, another very impressive ceremony with a voice from heaven. Another story. Do you remember the miracle of Christ's birth? It all started with one star, which stood out against the darkness of the evening sky. And then... There wasn't just a mere streak of lightning. If you remember the story of the birth of Christ, it wasn't just a streak of lightning, but the heavens themselves, they open up and a chorus of angels, uh, the size of the Mormon tabernacle choir or, or even greater. They come before these shepherds and they scare the wits out of the shepherds. And then one angel comes and speaks to them and says, 
do not be afraid. We have come to bring you really good news. And finally, the dismay, not of a star in heaven, on a voice from heaven. But let's remember one more story of the heavens opening. But you have to think about the life of Jesus Christ, the teacher of the disciple of the disciples, the miracle worker that makes the lame walk and the blind see. Remember now in that same story the Jesus criminal who is convicted, who is crucified at Calvary, and whose crucifixion atones the world's sin. In this story, the sky turns black. The earth quakes in memory of a time when there was no light. And a voice speaks, not from heaven this time, but from the cross. And the voice says, Eli, Eli, Lemon, Sabachthani, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? And the partitions between heaven and earth split right down the middle as the curtain of the Holy of Holies is split from top to bottom. Sin is forgiven. Restoration and wholeness are offered. The whole of Christ's life and resurrection is now connected with the salvation of the world. Can you remember these great stories of the Bible? All of them are creation stories. They all build to the creation of forgiveness. These are truly breathtaking series of events. They seem to be in the mind's eye the way that the Bible writers want us to see them. Because what they believe and what they want us to accept and believe is that all these sky-opening events are truly significant events for all of human life and history. That is what the Bible teaches, and it all begins at Genesis. Genesis 1. Life-giving, law-giving, birth-giving, salvation giving power. These are all sky-opening events. This morning's scripture is so important because we so quickly forget the sky-opening power of God, and we easily fall back into operating as though other events in our lives are ultimately important. Events in our life at work, events in our life when we go to different meetings or in our families, events even in the world, or something that comes across your Google news feed. I confess that it doesn't take me long to get distracted and mindlessly start searching for news on the St. Louis Cardinals and their plan about whether or not to sign their catcher, Yadier Molina. And at that point, everything goes out of my mind because there is nothing more important than the St. Louis Cardinals. You see, we're so easily diverted from firmly focusing on the sky-opening events of God in our lives. To the contemporary commentators of current events, they do say things that are worth paying attention to. I think that this is true, but I also think that sometimes they think that the current events that they are talking about are of ultimate significance. If I thought they were, I would feel a heaviness beyond endurance. I do not feel that way, however, because I believe that the events of ultimate significance are the sky openers that we see in Scripture. What I believe was stated this way by Malby Babcock back in 1901. 
This is my father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seemed oft so strong, God is ruler yet. This is my father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus who died will be satisfied and earth and heaven will be one. Bring it down to yourself. What's going on in your life right now that is important? What's happening in your work that is important? If you have taken a beating during the COVID pandemic economically, that's important. If your body is developing health difficulties, that is important. If you've done some things that you're ashamed of and that can't be undone, that also is important. If someone that you love seems to have um, gone astray, that's important. But if any of these things are of ultimate importance to you, then you are in deep trouble. Any one of them has the capability of undermining your health, your happiness, and your hope. Put a few of them together at the same time and they have the capacity of destroying you. Jesus knew in his heart that he was in the hands of the one who created light and dark, the one that belongs to, the one that controls chaos, the one who holds him in loving care and that would sustain him who sees and has to see even pain and death. We need to continually remember that our lives in Christ are connected to Christ. We are plugged into love and power. God is the power that turns on the lights. God turns on the powers of the light. The unbelievable power of creating, guiding, forgiving, restoring, and strengthening our life. Hold on to the ultimate promise of God during the days that threaten to undo you. Salvation in Christ, which you may have forgotten. You may have even gotten to the point where you tend to view it as an event of less sky-opening importance. Remember, it is, in fact, the most profoundly important event of your life. Jim Folsom was the governor of Alabama. He was a big man. He had a big body and a big voice and a big heart. And while he was at a governor's convention in Williamsburg, the Navy took the governors as a group out to one of its aircraft carriers. Get the captain said broadly, you gentlemen are about to witness one of the most impressive shows you will ever see. He went on for a few moments and then he gave the command. Let the show begin. The idling engine of the poised jet was throttled up to a deafening roar and then the steam catapult fired the plane off the bow. It had just begun to climb when the voice of the pilot came over the PA. I'm on fire! Sure enough, the plane suddenly trailed smoke and fire. The pilot climbed high enough to eject whereupon he floated down into the ocean as the jet spiraled down into the sea with a mighty splash. Instantly, a rescue helicopter lifted off, sped to the pilot at the plane, at the place of his watery baptism, lowered a line, and hoisted him into the air in a matter of moments, and he was deposited safely and dripping wet on the carrier deck. The stunned silence on the observation deck was suddenly broken by the voice of big Jim Folson, who blurted out like a awestruck schoolboy, man, was that ever a show. The fireworks at Albert Lee were great. The fireworks from the cloud above them paled by comparison. The immediate events and circumstances of the world of your life are important and sometimes deeply threatening. But they are not of ultimate importance, however. The events of ultimate importance 
are those sky openers celebrated in scripture, events in which your life can be rooted and grounded. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you and we are comforted knowing that you are a God that is so great, so powerful, that you truly can charge our lives, that you can give us your loving power so that we can continue, even in the midst of dark times, to find our way to the light. Thank you, God, for this day. And we pray, Lord, that you would multiply your power in our lives so that others might know the love of Jesus Christ. And we pray these things in your Son's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtor. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye.